2014 European match between Empire and Arcade. We're actually going into Game 3 of the Best of 3 series, as although Empire was struggling in Game 1, they struck back in Game 2 and it brought us the Equalizer. So we're going to be looking at a final decided game to see who's going to be taking this match here in the group. Both teams relying on it, and we're already underway in the draft. So once again, thanks for tuning in, and I'd like to introduce my co-caster. I'm myself and Blaze, and I'm joined by Llama Down Under. How's it going? I'm pretty well. I think Shadowfiend, first time today that he's made it through, usually banned, but of course they have to ban out the IO for Power Rangers, and getting rid of the Doom Tusk on Empire means that Shadowfiend is in. And then the Bane. Bane, really highly prioritized by some teams. Like and see in it here, but other than that, I mean, it all looks pretty normal. I'm excited to see how the dire Shadowfiend will go. Absolutely. And uh, the solder is in the pool still, so we might be seeing that here in uh, Phase 2. It will be really strong for Empire's lineup in particular, so we'll see if Arcade try to ban that out for their secondary. Already taking out the Night Stalker. Um, clockwork also actually a real threat here, so it's not just the slaughter. The Clockwork actually is also a really good yeah. offlaner. I feel like now we have a couple of good options here that uh, we could see Flo take to the offlane. We already Ten saw what he could do with the Clockwork in Game 1, or Game 2, but here in Game 3, you're up against a pain and a shadow fiend, two heroes you would love to be right up close and personal with. Yeah, it definitely Result feels time. like Empire just have got themselves in a great position for whatever offlaners they want. And uh, I personally, uh, if I were Arcade, I probably would be less likely to want the Clockwork just of how because of how well he counters heroes like Bane and the Shadow Fiend. With the battery assault, it's hard to get away from him, but. Uh, I don't know. It's It sucks either way, right? If the Slaughter gets off to a good start, gets an early blink, suddenly you've got a big minus armor strat on your hands. And while Gyro doesn't do a lot of physical damage early, he that will stack up. But now, Arcade, I think, saying that you get one, we get one strat, potentially. To an extent, yeah. And I mean, it also, yeah, There's no if you ban one, they're going to pick the other one. There's also Darkseer in the pool, which could be good with the Gyrocopter. So while not as emphasizing the negative armor aspect or the pickoff aspect, it uh, still has a lot of value. So overall, there's just so many offlaners in the pool, they say, Five let's ban out something remain. different. They ban out the Undying, which is most commonly Three supporting Empire's alongside Dazzle. And while they lack Disable in terms of like any hard stun, they are amazing in terms of their sustainability, and they can create a, a tremendous push strat. So Empire going to go for the Slardar ban, and I would assume Darkseer or Clockwork will be their hero of choice here for pick number three. Yeah, and it's the Clockwork, and now Arcade Dial has an option. They can go with something like the Wyvern or a Rubik, both heroes which will be decent if you get hookshotted in on, but ah, uh, actually you can run a really deadly tri-lane with a Bane Rubik, probably. It's, it's decent. something. It's, yeah. it's something. Yeah, I'm just trying to think of, because I normally prefer, I would say, Wyvern's an excellent support. She has the ability to harass with Arctic Burn in mid. Of course, Winter's Curse a huge seconds. spell, and Splinter Blast a surprising amount of damage and a really short cooldown. So she feels like an all-around solid pick in general, but of course she does lack, other than Winter's Curse, some hard lockdown, and she's very squishy. So... Mm -hmm. I might like to see the Razor again. I know it's it's not the most exciting of picks, but the Bane Razor we saw it a couple times and it was really valuable. And uh, I think in general, like you want something that can tank up pretty hard uh, and doesn't just get picked off solo by the Clockwork easily. So um, some potential there, but um, they don't have to go for that pick now or if ever in their draft. And uh, they might just look for, uh, like you said, an alternative support would be fine. Uh, the Wyvern is going to be the pick, so that's great with the Shadow Fiend. Um, the Winter's Curse into Requiem, if you can get that off, it has so much potential in terms of damage output, and uh, just in general enables their team fight while also securing the landing phase quite handedly. Yeah, very nice for... Uh, sorry, my brain just died for one second, but either way, get into the draft. For Team Empire, they need another support. They probably want something that brings maybe a little bit more stun, just because I imagine Gyrocopter won't be going for a rocket. And Clockwork, while he does have a lot of stun, it's mostly ult and he has to get up in close. Do you think it's possible to run something like an Earthshaker here, or is that too greedy? Reserve time. Huh. Well, they're going to go with the Rubik themselves, interestingly enough. It's really good for stealing Fiend's Grip, uh, one of the few yep. channeled spells you can't cover up at all. Team so uh, it's definitely a, a solid pickup. Um, other than that, the Winter Wyvern ultimate is a possibility. And uh, even a quick lift against Batrider, didn't know about it at the time, but Bat is actually a pretty good counter to him. A hookshot or a, a telekinesis can both really mess Ten up a Batrider who's trying to pull somebody out of position. And uh, of course the one benefit is Batrider can Five fly over those remaining. power cogs, so 
he's not as inhibited in that capacity, but I think it's going to be maybe the Dazzle that they look to pick off for the most part, because the Dazzle obviously provides the Shallow Grave backup, so anybody that gets caught in uh, side the Lasso might be dropped 100 to, to 1 HP, but is actually still going to survive thanks to the Shallow Grave. So it really just comes down, I guess, situationally to um, is it the value pick just to get the target down to 1 HP and then 5 seconds later kill them, or do you just want to kill the Dazzle outright and therefore make it impossible for Empire to really fight you without uh, that life insurance? Reserve time. Yeah, I also completely agree, as you said. There's, like, so many good Rubik things to steal here. There's actually, like, a lot of stuff you're kind of okay with getting. Everything that Wyvern has, you're fine with. Bane has a number of great spells, and you can occasionally grab something from Batrider that's pretty funky. But we'll see what Empire's last pickup is. They... It was an Empire. Somebody else earlier today ran the Gyromid, and it didn't go so well. Sure. Um, but do you, It's probably an Dragon off... Knight. Okay. I was going to say, I'm not sure if it's Dying an offlane team. Batrider, because we've seen some teams try to do this, but it's really hard against a Rubik, it feels. Like, that's not definitely. super easy. No, not at all. Um, I, I It's definitely possible. Huskar. It depends on the last pick, and the last pick's going to be a Huskar of all things, so... Um, I wasn't expecting that on a side, like... Uh, yeah, normally the Dazzle pick, the clear, like, hey, they're going Huskar, but it's nice here, and I don't think there's a good counter for it on Empire. Like, yeah, you can lift him up maybe a little bit, but there's a lot of magic damage on Gyro early, and same as, well, Dragon Knights, I guess when he has Dragon Form early, he can hit a bit harder, but it's not no. maybe hard enough. Now, the, the emphasis of Gyrocopter and Dragonite as heroes, especially as they scale, is all about AoE physical damage, and Huskar is not worried about AoE physical damage, uh, just just the the straight up uh, single target, uh, anything that can bring him down quickly. Uh, the Winter Wyvern in particular is going to be great with the Cold Embrace to help Huskar through a tough spot. If he ever gets caught inside of Telekinesis and they might be able to kill him off during that time period, that Cold Embrace is going to make that Huskar pretty much invulnerable. Um, to everything but pure damage, which is not pre present here. So it's just one of those amazing last picks. Tron teeping up to actually place the ward himself, and he's going to be farming the safe lane, whereas uh, Barash will take the Shadowfiend mid, and that will leave the Batrider to the off lane. So kind of a, a cheeky pick, but um, there's really no direct counter to it, other than the fact that you can't really armlet toggle very well against the Elder Dragon form's Corrosive Breath. Mm -hmm. Yeah, and I also... While I do worry about how Batrider will go in this bottom lane, just because Rocket Barrage lift or lift into the Rocket Barrage uh, repositioning you can always be a tough hill for a Batrider to swallow. If he plays it really safely, he can certainly make some stuff happen. And especially if uh, we have some roaming, I kind of, I don't know if this is going to be a strict tri lane from the Rubik Dazzle. While Dazzle isn't maybe the best ganker, a Rubik can gank really well. So. Certainly something where maybe the Rubik will go do some stuff with smokes, freeing up Batrider a little. Yeah, I mean, he can, he can gank with these heroes. I think in general, Rubik isn't the best for rotations, but you have like a Dragon Knight who's going to add yeah. in not only breathe fire damage, but that extra stun. So just a lift into the Dragon Tail could easily net them a kill on somebody as squishy as a Shadow Fiend if he doesn't have support. But I think that we're going to see a lot of movement here from arcade supports. So, uh, in contrast to what we're going to see from Empire, we already have boots on J4, and uh, my mouse is screwing up, so I can't really do anything. I'll fix that real quick. Aloha Dance also picked up the early boots, as did Cheshire Cat, so a lot of people understanding that if they can get these out early, they can certainly get a lot of work done. Is J4 going for a courier snipe, though? I have not seen this Bane. I've, I've seen a lot of, like, Wyvern is a very common courier snipe here. Of course, there's the Bounty Hunter, but... Bane, haven't seen that one. He does start with huge amounts of base damage, of course. He doesn't have the melee advantage, so he's gonna need... No, he should be able to do it in two hits. Yeah, and then right. uh, because of the branch built up here, we're gonna see Dragon Knight go for the bottle straight out, and, and that could be very problematic, in fact, uh, if uh, Empire kind of beaten at their own Corgir sniping game, and uh, yeah, I don't see that this Corgir has any chance to live now that it's made this path uh, of travel. It might deliver the bottle, but Bane will be ready for it when it comes back. Yeah, he didn't go for it, maybe not thinking he'd get it on the way there? Yeah, he no, it's, it's much like easier it's to... Yeah. Essentially, it's a reaction time thing. He didn't see it until it was already too late, but now he's going to know that it's coming back, and he's going to be ready for it. But, oh, uh, but... Oh, because it's crowing. He's going to use it to crow immediately, it looks like, and I don't know if the creep wave just saw J4. Uh, I think he stayed up top. Oh, no, yeah, there's no. a ping. There's a ping. They saw him. All right. So there you go. The slow little donkey makes his trek and makes his deliveries 
unmolested. So they did have a nice little damage opportunity. They they comboed up on Barash a little bit, but I don't think they were able to pull him into the river. So despite the telekinesis and the dragon tail, uh, Barash will still keep kicking, and uh, he will actually bring out some extra tangos here just to sustain the lane. Yeah, and I really like this and also find it kind of funny, just like last game, where just because of how it worked out, the bounty hunter couldn't get any kills, just also because he decided to immediately bottle crow resolution, not giving them the courier. Although J4 chillax in here, he's got just the brain sap. We've also sometimes seen the frenzy, but of course it's not as good against a dragon knight who's going to be mainly CSing with the breathe fire, but he can certainly just be harassing, and yeah, now he gets a DD, so. It's hard though, on a bane. You're not exactly the biggest range in the game. Yeah, I mean, you, you do what you can. Uh, you can trade very well, that's the big thing, is your armor, your your brain sap, it makes it so that you can, all, as, if they ever get close enough, you're always going to be able to, to win out on those exchanges. So, it just it definitely wards off the Rubik, he has to go back bottom, there's no way he does anything more in mid. And then, uh, now he's actually given some space for the Shadowfiend to build up his stacks. The Breathe Fire does reduce your attack damage, so it did suppress him a little bit, but now... He's uh, good to just bottom tower build up those attack. souls and, for, for the most part, out CS the DK while he spams uh, Bottle Crow. Now, Cheshire Cat was forced back to base, and this was pretty surprising considering that, oh, it's the same ward, they're going to find it on Empire. So he's forced back to base. Uh, does that one not block, that sentry? Maybe he just doesn't mind that it blocks because it's early. Oh, um, no, he it's in the river. Just a gyro. It's uh, just a... Yeah. 3D thing. No, yeah, it's in the river. I just wasn't sure if the box... Cause the no, box no, no, no. Any, anything uh, in the river is fine. There's nothing yeah. that blocks in the river. Yeah, sometimes those spawn boxes are funky as, but yeah, I the Cheshire Cat was having a really rough time. He's gonna... He had a bit more extra space just because the Rubik wasn't there, but I wonder with Rubik now rotating down if he's gonna get potentially ganked again, and Rubik dewarding him, of course, making it even scarier, but we still have dual mid from Arcade. Yeah. They actually seem to be very happy with this, just giving Barash secure farm. Of course, up top, Huskar is not going to be contested. If you ever walk up to Huskar, he's going to mm -hmm. throw three spears right into you, and you're going to back off. So uh, they only need the one support. Um, they can even pull while Huskar solos the lane, no problem at all. And uh, this just gives a, a better spread of experience, as we now see J4 going to be able to stack up the jungle for the Shadow Fiend. And they're overall just getting more out of the map right now. And Cheshire Cat is not being zoned out as hard as uh, you would like if you're an Empire fan. I mean, uh, Batrider, his weakness, he's still just as strong in the offlane. His weakness is really if he gets zoned out, he doesn't have that many backup options when he's at low levels. But here he is, getting full experience from every creep wave, and that just means uh, really good things for Arcade's early progression. Yeah, and Rubik's having a really hard time. We can see Aloha Dance really wants to get something done, even has those boots early, but Cheshire Cat now playing really far back, understanding that he's there. Let's talk Silver Edge, because Silver Edge is something that you kind of expect to see up against a Huskar. It's definitely something the DK can go. I believe the break is purged when you use Life Break, though, so you have to be careful about your timing as the user of the Silver's Edge, or am I confused there? Um, he's spell immune while uh, life life breaking, but I'm I'm actually not sure about that interaction there. I don't play that much Huskar, so I, I know yeah. that it is a considered a counter to him because you can break the Berserker's blood yep, passive and get some magical top. damage out. And I believe the Dragonite will build it up for that purpose. I'm not sure if life break will uh, fit the bill. Usually it's just going to be a silver edge hit into a dragon tail, and they mm -hmm. burst them down in that duration. Yeah. Yeah, and as you said, if you stun the guy and he's not getting off the life break, then you don't have to worry about any of those interactions. I think it has, like, a purge on it or something, but I can check that in a second. Either way, we've got a big stack being contested. Flo is getting some decent levels, but as we talked about, somehow Batrider, despite spending ages in the base, has eclipsed him. This Wyvern doing a fantastic job of zoning him, and again, this is one of the key heroes. The Clockwork needs the six. He needs to get a quick gank off onto uh, Barash, and then... The game gets a lot easier for Empire, it feels. So, for now, Tron's just going to last at everything, no problem at all. Uh, couple, like, one or two radiant creeps going to the neutrals, which means 0% experience for him. But bo down bottom, Chester Cat's actually in a lot of trouble here. Has the Firefly, and, uh, of course, could make a long way attack. away. So, they're just trying to zone him off the tower so that they can focus on pushing. Uh, which is taking the tower below half HP, but um, without going for, like, a Basilius early, they, they really aren't getting enough out of it. And uh, stacks will continue for the Shadow Fiend that this one seems to have missed. Yeah. Yeah, the spell immunity dispels debuffs upon cost. So I think he gets rid of it. I'm not super sure if it's a strong dispel, though. I'd have to read more up on it. But yeah, we'll see it this game because I do imagine, as you said, 
Oh, well, we might not see it because this, uh, the dragon's tail may come out. But this gank, they want bottom. I guess they're just going for a push now on bottom. It is pretty low. And suddenly with dragon form, you take this thing easily. And there they go. Kind of wasn't expecting them to go for bottom, but it makes sense. At the same time, is SF is left middle? Yeah, he'll just push down your tower. So. Yeah, Flo's in trouble, though. He's going to go 1v2, trying to do some damage to the wyvern. But in the end, the huskar wins out. And that's going to be a very fast armlet for him. Um, dual lane mid, clearing out the creep wave, but not hitting the tower Dyer's nearly as quickly as Empire. Now, a potential issue that Huska has is he doesn't farm creeps well, he farms heroes generally. So I wonder, Radiant's I do of course think the armlet is core, attack. you get maybe yourself some type of boots, there's actually quite a few players who enjoy just keeping brown boots. Do you worry here though, because it, it's something where I think a team of Empire's experience, you can try to just play away from the Huska, and that's really going to hurt his farm. Well, one thing that Huskar still has the option of doing is low HP jungling. Uh, you can g just use the armlet wisely, and you can jungle clear. You can clear the full jungle every minute if uh, you have your max uh, burning spears, berserker's blood, and uh, you use your armlet appropriately. But half of that's going to go to the bat rider anyways. So overall, he doesn't want to play a farming game, but when there's times where you really just can't be aggressive, I think he's still going to be able to, for the most part, keep pace with his opponents. It's when the stacks come into play that Gyro and DK really pull ahead. Yeah, so. Huskar, just gonna be getting a grand old time in the farming, and Gyrocopter also doing well, but as we talked about already, he's magic Radiant's damage early game, so not exactly bringing the hurt to Huskar. Um, another option for Huskar as well that I've seen be really, it used to be really popular, um, it used to be the Solar Crest build. Of course, Solar oh, yeah. Crest got nerfed a little bit. It's still, I think, viable here. It's just a bit more risky than it used to be because of the nerf to evasion. All right, so we've got the Dragonite caught inside the Nightmare. Dazzle's not going to wake him up. Oh, they actually wake each other up, and that just oh. diffuses this situation entirely. I'm not sure what was attempted there, but uh, I think the big thing was the Dragon Tail coming out, and so the Gyrocopter wanted that to come into play, but in the end they didn't connect, and uh, they couldn't find that kill. But, yeah, I mean, right now it's pretty quiet. It's a 0-1 to one game. It's going to be when the, the armlet is complete, uh, as we see now, and the Batrider Blink comes online, that arcade start shifting the tempo of the game. I also think the timings for this game are a little bit interesting because we've got a Gyrocopter who certainly can do a lot of damage output later as the game progresses, but, of course, Flat Cannon is six shots every 30 seconds. And uh, Dragon Knight, it's, he doesn't build into the hardest of carries. But then you can say the same thing about a Huskar. Right, he he does a lot of work early. Itemizing him for super late game, he doesn't always hit like a truck. Maybe how you want. So, um, I kind of wonder if this ends up going very late. Whether it'll all just come down to Batrider immobilizing one hero, there also being Winter's Curse, or whether yeah. you can really do this off the back of a Huskar if it goes late. The ultimate disables becomes very important here. Uh, I think the Dragonite's are going to build more like a ganker than as a carry, per se. Like, he's still going to get a lot of attack damage, good attack speed, but he's not going to be the one that's, like, critting people down until we reach, like, 50 minutes plus. He's mostly going to so focus on getting the, blink? The, the, the initiation. Uh, Shadow Blade or Blink, either one. Shadow Blade's actually probably stronger this game. Yeah, it's always funny because... You can arguably go both, but as you mentioned, you, you get one for the initiation, and both is sometimes overkill, and then you're kind of an extra item slot down, but your Shadow Blade, of course, comes with the easy nerf, unlike the blink of if they put down sentries, maybe that initiation is lost. So now Flo and Silent, they're looking for stacks. Unfortunately, they've been cleared, and now they're looking for a kill, but SF is way back. Are they going for their own Dyer's smoke? Middle tower yeah, Huskar has one. Is this an... Oh, this could be speed. bad. They're going to walk right into it. No, they're going south. I really would expect oh, them to go this path, and there they go. They both are broken. They both know what's going on, but who will actually initiate? It's going to be Cheshire Cat getting some clear vision, and now going with the blink. Lasso pulling in silent. Really bad news for Empire as he gets completely isolated and killed off without a hope or a prayer. Yeah, they didn't know about the blink dagger there. Really good first usage of it. I actually was a thinking maybe Tron had got lifesteal and was going for that really early Roshan you can do on a Huskar. Um, I was a bit confused. I'm like, why are you taking the Bane with you? That doesn't help. But no, it was just an attempt. And they're getting themselves a tower. You know, the DK, he wants to be using that ult every time it's on cooldown to push a tower, and he can't here because he had to blow it for the potential team fight. 
I don't think you want to risk a, a Roche sneak uh, as Huskar against a Clockwork. It's not fast enough that Empire wouldn't just get suspicious, throw a random rocket flare out, and uh, then the situation gets very dicey very quickly. So I, I think overall it's smarter to go for the kills. In this case, though, they, they get the Gyrocopter very cleanly. Don't even have to leave their side of the map uh, to get essentially a freebie there. So uh, getting that all together, we've got the Gyrocopter building as quick as he can towards some real damage. It looks like the Yasha for him. But uh, this DK probably just drums, yeah, or maybe he does go for that Shadow Blade before and just have a. Yeah, okay, it's gonna be Shadow Blade and uh, just a casual bracer. Yeah, it makes sense. A little bit of tank up, but as you said, getting that Shadow Blade initiation so they can actually do something here. And they've got Aloha Dance, something I'm pretty impressed by. He's actually really close to the blink, all things, cons all things considered. Mm -hmm. He's about a thousand gold away, and for this stage in the game, it's pretty good because he also has arcanes so that'll maybe be something that can help them out against arcade i am not sure though this bat rider it's all gonna i think a lot of it's gonna come down to him getting pulls and you can also do the dirty thing where you like lasso firefly someone back into your huskar and then they're just gone i'm not sure if i really like the fact that dazzle is maxing shadow wave here although it's kind of the standard Ooh. build in this game, I feel like there's going to be so many distant pickoffs that it's going to be hard for him to get in position to use the level 1 Grave. And I think that's much more important than a slightly better or shorter Dyer's cooldown heal. Uh, like, just in general, like I feel like the, the Shadow Wave will help a little. The Shadow Grave will be game-breaking, whether or not he gets that on the right target at the right time. And the way how quickly Huskar can bring somebody down or how Batrider can pull somebody out of position uh, makes me think that a little, uh, prioritizing Shallow Grave from this point forward might be uh, necessitated. Yeah, and I also think it's one of those games, so there are some games where you're like, oh, I'm so glad I picked up that early point in Poison Touch, we got a bunch of kills off the back of it. This is not one. No. This is not one of the games where they're using Poison Touch to make a lot of stuff happen around the map. Yeah, they've got a smoke here, they're going for a push, and they'll see anybody rotating with this ward, but I doubt Poison Touch is going to be the deciding factor, and so... Sometimes when that happens, as you said, you're really frustrated because you probably want the weave, depending on the game, you want the weave at 6, but you also want to max out Shallow Grave, and you've now put a bunch of points into Shadow Wave, so you probably want to max that just because otherwise, what is your skill build? So, as you said, it's rough for this Dazzle, and they're actually all backing out. They popped the Dragon Form, and this is... Honestly, I don't think it's very good for Empire, especially if this Dragon Knight is going the initiation build. It really puts them on a timer and the D Ward. So now they're blind. Mm -hmm. Lost uh, an Observer, lost a Sentry. Still have this one for a moment, but although they gave them intel that they probably needed to back off in this position, it's not actually giving them forward momentum. But you were talking about this before, that the Empire has a definite option just to dodge ganks. To say, okay, well, Huskar is trying to feed off of kills. He doesn't farm stacks. We do. So let's just stick to our side and, and do what we do best. And I think that that's probably the better, more appropriate recourse. The yeah. problem is now Arcade are all in the the right place at the right time where they can pressure this tier 1 tower and anybody that defends is instantly picked off. Yeah, to do this type of dodging the fights, you 100% are going to lose your towers. And also, it's still a risky game because Shadow Fiend and Gyrocopter are kind of on the same level of hard carries. They can both build some similar items where what you're fighting into a Shadow Fiend is a Gyrocopter with both of you having Satanics is close. And then you've also got the issue of Dragon Knight, we talked about it, he can optimize for being that mass Dyer's damage, he can go tower. stuff like the Chrysalis. It's hard though, and he does really probably want the Silver's Edge to deal with Huskar, tower. so not attack. sure what's the right call here, and whether it's just that Empire, like in game two, it felt like they were behind a little bit. They just waited until they got the one big team fight and snowballed off of it, and if they can do this here, it would work out nicely. Radiant structures are fortified. But how do you find that, like, right? Like, as we talked about, I think like last game, it's hard to choreograph Radiant's that, and you almost need to wait for an arcade mistake. Sure. Maybe it'll be the Roche Pit again. Who knows? It definitely has a possibility. I mean, they're a little bit better in the pit here, I would say, um, just because they can open with, like, the lasso, pull somebody up on a cliff, uh, they have the Winter's Curse to take down anybody that's trying to help that person out, and then J4 can be the last man in and probably be able to get a decent Fiend Spear buff without uh, much disable. Probably the spell steal would probably be what he's most wor worried about there. We're going to see a trade of tank as Farash and Tron try to bring this thing down. It's already to half HP with a lot of Burning Spear stacks Ooh. on it, but we are going to see that movement here. Yeah, they rocket flared it a little bit earlier and they finally made their way down. Two TPs and three heroes charging in, but there's only a little bit of time left. 
and they want to get in quick for Raj with a great Requiem, and there is going to be the Lasso up high. Now only Dazzle, oh no, Silent got caught by a two. Silent and Dazzle caught inside that Winter's Curse, but the Winter's Curse is stolen and put onto Barrage. Tron is laying into him momentarily, but he will be cold embraced, tank through it, and Tron will get the last laugh. He got the Aegis, they got the Roshan, and they will get a three-man wipeout. Yeah, Tron spent most of that fight on like 70 health and they just weren't able to bring him down. You can see Bazooka's blood doing so much work, like they have too much magical damage right now for Empire and they don't seem to have a way around it and now putting themselves kind of a bit in the hole. I, I don't know the best options here just because it's a Huskar, right? Like we've, I think we've all seen that game where Huskar just takes over because you didn't happen to pick a counter for it. And even though they stole the Winter's Curse, like that's an insane play by Aloha Dance. Unfortunately, the Wyvern just cold embraced the Winter's Ghost target, and it doesn't matter. Exactly. It just they, they really are countered in that capacity. They don't have much physical damage to begin with, um, but their magical damage means very little to a Huskar, and uh, even the Shadow Fiend being perfectly fine with the mech and, and the support from his teammates there. So all in all, a great showing from Arcade, and it really comes down to the draft this time around, where Game uh, 1... Uh, and two, uh, mostly game two, I'm thinking of, wasn't that decisive based on the draft. It was really team fight execution. Here, Arcade just have, like, I would say uh, at least 20%, maybe 25% advantage just from this last pick, Huskar. Yeah, it's just like when your team sneaks a level one Roshan. It becomes much harder to lose the game just because you've got that little advantage that the other team can't counter. Now, just like in the first game, I think we're going to see Empire try to stick it out for as long as they can. They're going to not say it's over until the Ancient, or well, until they actually decide it's over. And Silent, again, he seems to go for Yasha BKB. i Radiance top really top confused top that he doesn't want to tank up a bit more, although I do agree the BKB would be really helpful against the Huskar here. Well, I, if there's one person that knows how Gyrocopter needs to build in a game, it's Silent. This guy probably yeah. has more uh, Gyrocopter games than almost anybody in the European scene. He takes to the late game nine times out of ten and does an amazing job. I've seen mm -hmm. this guy get six slotted so many times on this hero. Whatever he builds is is the right build. <laughs> in the way I, I I think this guy can do no wrong on this hero in this capacity. Yasha for farming speed now going into the BKB sounds good to me. It could actually be this. It sounds weird, but it could be a desolator just to yeah. get that negative armor against the Huskar. But you're still frustrated by that cold embrace. Cold Embrace, and then also I think it's probably just the BKB because then you can stand up to Huskar's Burning Spears. Rubik yep. manages to... Do did he just do dodge that and die to a... Wow. Well played, Aloha Dance. <laughs> Second well played of the game. Radiant I missed most of that kill, but yeah. Um, so that's something. At the same time, they're losing their tier 2, and Barash actually has a mech, so he's going to be going for a bit of an earlier game build. He can, of course, always swap that out if he ends up getting really fat. He also has 3k gold, so he may be going for a surprise BKB to say, hey, Gyro, none of your damage does anything. Silent farming nice, but now there's going to be BOTs, and they've got the Winter's Curse to prevent Silent from disengaging no. here. They'll lock him in place. The BOTs are cancelled as the creep falls, though. And uh, it looks like the TP will work out anyways. Oh. The nightmare is not in time. Oh, Silent. that's a shame. If only we all could play Dota like that. That was a really nice play there. And I think, as you pointed out, he they used the Winter Curse and then Silence like, oh, you have nothing, and I don't think the nightmare will get off in time. So, well played. Looking around the map, we've got a couple new item pickups. The Shadow Blade has been finished for a bit. Dragon Knight kind of not showing us what he's going next. He can go back for the drums. It's not awful. It's actually really great stats for its cost. So I'm, even though it kind of feels like it's a bit weird to maybe get it after an item like a Shadow Blade, still great. And we've almost got a Blade Mail out of Clockwork. While, while you're like, you're definitely probably going to die to the Huska, at least you can maybe in return kill him, especially since it is pure damage that's returned. So, yeah. and I don't think Huska, oh yeah, never mind. As I say, I don't think Huska was, I didn't know if he was going BKB or something greedy. Yeah, he's almost done with the BKB. So maybe Blade Mail won't matter shortly. Yeah, unfortunately. The, the Blade Mail was the right choice, but it just came out too late for it to be of assistance here. Um, Arcade are clearly looking to end the game within the next 10 to 15 minutes. Uh, rushing out BKBs at this time on both cores essentially says, let's fight, let's rax, let's win the game. And uh, yeah, Barash having a 10 second BKB at the exact same time that Tron is finishing his, that is just perfect for Wait, them. Wait, does Barash have a hiding BKB that I missed? Cause he I, went I swear Jasha. I saw the pop-up. Where is that? No, he went Sanjin Yasha. Did he sell? Okay, so he sold it and then finished? Maybe maybe he sold it, but he definitely, I agree with you, I definitely thought he was building a BKB, and then it's like, Sanjin Yasha, so he may have just... No, nah, I definitely saw the pop-up. I don't know, I guess he did sell it, but... 
Weird. Also, really weird. The BKB for Tron is in the stash. What? What? Oh, uh, they, they just just got reclaimed. Yeah, yeah, we have a little engagement. We've got a blink forwards onto flow. A little bit of blade mail damage, but he is dead before he can even look. And again, that shallow grave only being two points. That's exactly what you talked about. He couldn't save his teammate. It would have delayed the inevitable, but it's always good to waste your opponent's time, get more farming time for silent. Yeah. And no shallow grave there. Unfortunate. But yeah, the BKB is coming out. He just finished it, and they wanted to smoke right then, um, just to try to put out pressure, put out some aggression. Um, when you're smoking, you're often finding a pick instead of a fight, and you don't need the BKB for that. You want the BKB for the fight that comes after the pick. Yeah. And, and now, of I course, was... he has that. Hmm. Yeah, and as you said, it, it's like maybe element of surprisery. So, but yeah, oh, the courier might Dyer's actually scout top silent top here. Top oh top goodness, top. silent! You have a TPE. Good. Oh, kill the courier, silent! Kill it with flat cannon. Oh my gosh, uh, no! He's gonna get the TV out. Aloha Dance yeah. is sad. Is under yeah, Aloha Dance is sad. Yeah. Gosh, this game, Couriers have been so resilient. I don't know if I would be that resilient if I were a Courier. Oh, if someone tried to kill me a few times like that, I'd just be done. I'd lie down as a Courier. Now, Dragon Knight has a bunch of gold saved up. He can be going the Silver's Edge, or he can be going a Blink Dagger. I am I feel like they're getting initiated a lot on Empire. Yeah, Silver Edge. Yeah. And Blink is up on Rubik, so this is nice. Aloha Dance. He can make something big happen here, potentially. Don't gank the illusions in mid. Yeah, they're good. Yeah, they'll, they'll keep their smoke. They'll, they'll keep that intact. We do see Resolution kind of having to stick to the farm again, though, um, while his allies go after play and have fun. Um, the other Blink on Rubik, so a quick jump is very possible. The second smoke breaks, they Blink forward, and they find somebody that would otherwise be obscured by mm -hmm. fog. But for now, they're not finding anything, as we do see... Arcade are on the opposite side of the map here. Gem up for Batrider, BKB for him soon, and Shadowfiend delivering out a new Ogre Club. Yeah, now probably his BKB, as you mentioned. And yeah, it looks like Batrider also BKB, about to be in about 1,100 gold. So everybody is... Everybody's tanky, and I'm not quite sure how this mass magic damage, because right now it really still is a lot of magic damage on Empire do the job. I guess they've got a little bit with flat cannon with dragon form, but it doesn't feel like it's enough with just a Yasha. So, from here on out, Empire really just relying on their ability to kill off the Huskar really early in the fights, but J4 is going to be the pick they do find. They will just open up with the ultimate since they know the tier 2 tower is going to fall shortly thereafter. So they go ahead, pick up the Bane, they want to counter push to tier 2, they want to force these TPs back, because right now they are not strong enough to fight arcade and they know it so what they want to do is they want to delay the uh, the high ground push by putting Radiant's out pressure but while they're hitting the tier two the tier three is already Dyer's under siege yeah under and it's one of those things where yeah the bane pickup is actually pretty nice because it's 900 gold at this point unfortunately not what you want and it doesn't stop the push although oh goodness it's a really short yeah that's a really short roshan and that's so unlucky for the lineup of empire another one of those things you just can't control and it's questionable whether they'll be able to defend against this high ground push they'll probably put it on tron again just because he's the huskar but you could also certainly put it on barash and just have him pound into that tower from the high ground because i think barash yeah he does a little bit more damage than tron although it's how much is it with the omelet toggled on yeah, it gets close yeah they're both hitting pretty hard here but um yeah the Secret shop is gonna be next, so is that gonna be? What? Oh, I thought you meant like someone was ganking there, and I was like, what? What gank the secret shop? Um, what are we looking at here? Um, could go plate mail. Yeah, goes for the plate mail. So we could be looking for the AC. We can be looking for Lotus Orb. Um, probably an AC, just because I feel like Lotus Orb here isn't so great. There, I mean, what are you returning? Poison Touch, Fade Bolt, Telekinesis? Does it dispel Silver Edge? Like, I, that's one mechanic I'm, I'm still not familiar with. Uh, is um, the, the, the uh, dispellability of Silver Edge, what kind of debuff is it? I don't know if it's normal or hard. I am just sure that the Life Break dispels it. Let me just check, because I can look it up since I was looking it up earlier. So, um, But yeah, it's dispels are weird. There are some which, like... Definitely should be dispelled by certain things, and ugh. I I don't always understand, because I, I feel I, like the definition of which is normal and which isn't. So Silver's Edge applies a... Holy cow, it's not in the list. Anyway, I'll keep looking at it as we sure. talk about other things. Yeah, I, I was had a really firm grasp on dispels right before they reworked it, and then suddenly they, they have 
uh, these new items that dispel and all this other little changes to Silver Edge obviously being a pretty new item as well. But uh, yeah, he's going to be at least getting extra durability in this situation. The Plate Mail is going to help out when the Cold Embrace isn't in play. Uh, he's actually got quite a bit of armor. With Armlet on, it's 23. And yeah. uh, Weave is the only negative armor as far as I can tell. So overall, maybe the they could benefit from a Medallion. Dazzle, I think, is working his way towards oh. that. Wow, meantime. okay, so apparently Silver's Edge is only meant to be magic immunity and it can't be dispelled by magic immunity or basic dispel, but then on death, but then for some reason it is dispelled by... All right, we do see BKB coming out on the Bat Rider here. It's going to be Ruby completely isolated, but they want a bigger target. They're going to pop the Winner's Curse here on Resolution. He's got a double damage rune. If he can just fight it out, they're going to get the Grave once the Lasso comes through, but that only buys him a couple seconds to fight, and J4 won't go down in that time thanks to the Cold Embrace. They're all bailing out in the process. But yes, um, I know that it's, it dispels when you use BKB. It's not prevented by BKB. Yeah. And then so, it obviously dispels on death. Yeah. I think it is probably a uh, strong dispel then and BKB, but who knows? And I think Lotus Orb is just a normal dispel, but again, well, lots there are of plenty fun of non purgeable dispel. debuffs too, and I think that might yeah. lump into it, but I'm not sure. So. Uh, either way, we've got Huskar getting bigger and bigger. At least Silent, again, Silent is doing a really good job. He's actually top of the net worth chart. I'm not sure how he does this. It's what you talked about before. But he does the thing where he's like, I am in a really bad spot. My team is 10,000 gold in the hole. Almost 10,000 experience in the hole. I'm still farming. Like, it's fine. I can handle it, guys. So Silent doing a fantastic job there. Whether it'll be enough, and especially as we talked about Huskar just stacking on the armor, you know, it's... It's looking grim. Yeah, it should be an AC for him too, so that's going to help with the Shadow Fiend a ton. I mean, the presence of Dark Lord plus AC just gives you so much potential, and if you're getting a good Winner's Curse off, that's turning the allies against each other, and negative armor applies to them significantly mm -hmm. too. Uh, so I think defensive weave uh, might be necessary in some fights, and that's unfortunate because you usually want it to stack as high as possible on the yeah. Huskar. Definitely part of why this hero was going to be good against Tusker, and it's just not going to work out, I think, for them. Although, at this point, I think anything you can take to buff up your heroes, because stuff like what happened to the Dragon Knight, he was just ripped apart up there as well as the Rubik. And... I don't know, it feels like uh, maybe a medallion for someone would be helpful. I know it's not the greatest, but you're also walking into stuff like Shadow Fiend's Presence of the Dark Lord maxed out at this point. Mm, oh, and the gank. Yeah. Can Shadow Fiend get it? Blow Dance getting a lucky oh. blink back, but the Batrider will pursue him and he will be tra trained down in the end. The death of him doesn't really signify a catalyst to push, but it is going to allow them to just push in every single lane and make it so that Empire aren't getting anything off the map. Even Silent is cowering right now. Yeah, and again, it comes down to we discussed it in the draft, but we weren't so sure about the Rubik pickup for Empire. It, because it was picked before the Batrider, and so before the Batrider, yeah, it had a bunch of good stuff it could st steal, but we were worried about it having maybe not the game impact they needed, oh, and J4, is he just going to fiend script? Fogged. Oh, Oh, that's really unfortunate. He definitely yeah. should have had that opportunity, and Shadow Fiend would have been able to bring him down, but the Fog of War uh, interrupts the cast animation, and he's going to be able to slip away. I'm still pushing out and forcing uh, three heroes up to the top lane. Yeah, nighttime vision, it's a thing, so... Uh, even if they can make some more space for Silent, he's no longer topping the net worth shot with Shadow Fiend going off and doing Shadow Fiend things. He's going for that MKB. It's going to be helpful. He needs another item after it, it feels like. Are you in favor of him just finishing up the Sandra Nyosha and then maybe trying to go for some other crazy damage? Or should he maybe Monta? I don't see Monta as being super great here, but I can understand maybe there are a couple things you can dodge. I would say the most important one would be the Batrider Lasso. If you can reset the target on that, you might be able to at least uh, get a few hits off or get a call down off before he actually retargets his lasso. Actually, see down bottom here, the Winter Wyvern, just solo pushing uh, with Splinter Blast, and he actually gets punished pretty heavily for it. Um, but yeah, I, I feel like at that point, we've got the Gyrocopter. Um, they don't want to go Lingots on him, maybe an ally. And then. Yeah, from he's already got the MKB. He probably wants Butterfly at that point once he's already acquired mm -hmm. the MKB for himself. I mean, yeah. Lifesteal is obviously great too, but I think the Butterfly might take higher priority. 
hundred percent. And I think you're pretty happy. Yeah, for SF, the MKB is not something he uh, is something he normally goes. You're not forcing him to out of an, a weird path. But a Huskar probably doesn't want to build up an MKB, right? You want to just build um, items that make you uh, kind of just stand and fight more. And while MKB can be okay, I think you're happier to maybe finish off the Satanic, maybe finish off some other. Oh, nice play from Resolution, but they scout him out first. That was such a cool little play, looking for somebody who was hiding behind the creep wave to get a quick jump, but it completely blows up in his face. Uh, they just go ahead, Fiends, Lasso, and down he goes. Now that's going to be a buyback forced, definitely. And uh, Arcade, maybe no they dragon get caught by the Clockwork, and they can Empire can actually force a full 5-on-5, five five, but I don't know it how really you fight comes you. down to Right? You have no dragon form, even if you buy back. Sure, what are you sure. gonna do? Like, dragon breathe them to no attack uh, damage? Like, it's <laughs> um, it's not the easiest. And actually, they may be in luck that they will get to wait out both of these. I would be really surprised, so color me surprised. Well, they the, just don't want to yeah. go for it. The last zone, the Fiend's Grip, are still pretty important mm -hmm. cooldowns that they had to commit for that kill. I mean, essentially, one of those cooldowns is a kill anyways. So, uh, the Dragon Knight is good as dead if they do decide to lasso him out of the base or something like that. It's just, uh, wasn't as opportunistic as they wanted to be, and mostly they're just waiting for Roshan. They want to go uh, the next Rosh before they go for the high ground. Now, for the lineup of Empire, I think Lotus Orbs here would be fantastic, right? Uh, Lincoln's also decent, but of course Bane has a couple things that can go through it and just proc it on small spells, but Lincoln's or Lotus Orbs for the lineup of Empire. BKBs are certainly nice against the Husker, but you're getting to the stage where I think your supports, who of course can't farm it because they're poor, a Lotus Orb would do the, a World of Wonder. Maybe the Clockwork should be the one to try to work towards that. Um, it definitely definitely could be valuable. Um, Lincoln's or Lotus, either one, really important here, I would say. And uh, yeah, I think, don't think it has much better to go for at this point in time. Heaven's Halberd would be the only exception mm -hmm. to that, but the Huskar's BKB is still 9 seconds, so... yeah. That's not going to be relevant for quite some time, and in general, the, the Clockwork has been struggling to find relevance here. Flo had a much better game the last game than he is here. In fact, he might just be picked off. Yeah, they're going in. Let's see if J4 can do anything. They have a hook shot onto the Wyvern, but now they're getting lassoed on Resolution again. He's nightmare up, and a Requiem of Souls going to pick off Aloha Danton. Now we see Resolution go down as well. I wouldn't be surprised if this is our GG call. And actually, Silent, he's going in, so it must be kind of their lost fight. He's doing quite a bit of damage to the Flag Cannon, but the Cold Embrace, the heal up from the Brain Sap, and Silent, he can't fight them all. They're not going to get anybody, and this is just disastrous. No fear trying to do anything, and he pops. Gem goes down. I so can't see close. how they can fight uh, after if, that type if of If they fight. got the Shallow Grave on Gyrocopter there, they actually could have at least killed the SF and maybe one other, but uh, the Nightmare was perfect. Bane hunted him out in the tree line, and down they all go. So Empire is actually in, in some real trouble now, uh, needless to say. A full five-man wipe, uh, the, the creep wave pushing in, but still no towers to be acquired. They are really afraid of the Clockwork counterplay. Yeah, and even as... Arcade may be afraid of the clockwork. They are over. They're approaching 20,000 net worth and experience ahead. Uh, this this gets us into the territory of game is nigh unthrowable. You know, it becomes one of the biggest throws if Empire manages to find a way back in. And that just top that top fight really surprised me. It felt like a. I mean, I know they got ganked a bit, um, and so that was why it ended up being 1v1, but I'm a little surprised Silent didn't just go farm elsewhere. I guess he really thought he could get some kill follow up. Just, uh, I mean, at that point, you just, you really feel like you have to do something. You can't just keep getting wiped out, or uh, you're gonna lose out much more long as the game goes on. Uh, like you said, the net worth graph is spiraling out of control. He's looking for a way back into this game. Thought he might have had it there, but again, the Dazzle's Shallow Grave just wasn't a factor in that, as it should have been. Um, yeah, so uh, the last thing is gonna be the Roshan. It's taken a while to spawn here. Uh, not the early spawn, it's gonna be actually just a minute before the maximum timer. But that's going to be Arcade's Q, I would say. They, they very clearly want to wait for Roche. They, they would have pushed in a lot earlier if not for that. Yeah, and they've got so many wards up here. Like, they see all of these rotations. They could easily, and even if... I feel like if they go into a 5v5, Arcade still wins. So, really nice... Really nice draft. I mean, I think a lot of it just comes back to this Lost Pick Hostel. Not something that Empire uh, had a counter to. And Tron now rocking a full AC... BKB, Helm of the Dominator, like this guy is tanky as all get up. And something's coming out to him, is it? Yeah, I like it. 
So they're going to try for the top tower, but they're probably either going to lose their tier 3 or be met by the entirety of Arcade and take a tumble for Empire. One thing I have to go back to a little bit is this Rubik Dazzle. Although we have some really good steals potentially for the Rubik, we haven't really seen much. One Winner's Curse, and other than that, just some random abilities that haven't really made much of an impact. There are other supports that could have been more involved in this game. Uh, could have had better response. I mean, I'll have, if they had known the draft in advance, could just go back in time. They would have definitely picked like a vengeful spirit to break the lasso, to break the armor. But in this case, the Rubik, he's only able to contribute so much. They picked him, I think, third. So it's it's not surprising that the pick isn't optimal. But it just feels like so many members of Empire have been really dwarfed in their impact. Yeah, and it could, as you said, just be the game. Um, it's the same as Bounty Hunter isn't always bad but unfortunately we got to watch a game today where he was really having a rough time although they do have a push and they're forcing someone home so at the very least they've done that getting some damage on the top tower actually arctic boning the illusions i just guess doesn't want to risk them being around for too long um haven't seen that one before as much and we have a smoke coming out i don't know if the wards scattered that because it is Hmm. I think if they were watching for the animation, the animation is within ward vision, but I doubt that Arcade were watching. Yeah, and it's level 1 hookshot. You're not even close to the pit here. They, they weren't even in range by the time it fell, and they immediately back off, knowing the Aegis and the Cheese are in enemy hands. So, uh, Ward's going to scout it out, but I don't think the Batrider finds somebody unless he has the perfect way to actually catch out Silent here with another blink. But no. Um, uh, the reason I mentioned the Rubik in particular is because Aloha Dance is famous for his Rubik. He's climbed the ladder with it, he plays it all the time, he used to solo mid Rubik, and now he's, he's the support. But he got a really fast Blink Dagger, and yet we've seen very, very little from him. And it just, that's just goes to show how backs against the wall Empire are, that essentially the only thing they can do right is farm. Yeah. They're split pushing really well, they're constantly keeping pressure on top lane, although Aloha Dance may be about to pay for that, and he probably needs to blink away now, it's nighttime. He sees the mass rotations and he's got a blink TP that'll come right out. So at least they're buying themselves a really good spot of time, but again, Empire is probably just going to push down this top lane and make sure they use the Aegis timing. So right now, we're going to be seeing Silent go ahead and push things out. He has the MKB complete, that BKB. Um, but nothing else right now. Dominator was the life skill was the choice. He was lacking life skills at this point, so it's it's obviously mm -hmm. very important. But at that same time, if he focuses attacks on a cold embrace target, or if he's locked down in any way, that's not going to do him any favors. And uh, the butterfly definitely has, to, I think, to be his next choice. Yeah, he also got this Dominator pretty late. Buys a TP up, and uh, I don't know. They know that. They've circled on the map, Arcade have, exactly where Empire is, but I'm not sure if they actually want to go for a gank. It looks like they do. So I think they would prefer to pick someone off before going in. I'm not quite sure why they're so hesitant about fighting into this high ground push. I think it's just giving Empire more time to get back into the game for Arcade not pushing right now. Because it does feel like they have everything. They have Aegis, they have Cheese, they have a Daedalus on Shadow Fiend. Like, what are they waiting on? Technically, they that's true and it has given them a little bit, but you see the net worth and experience are still going towards Arcade, and really what they're looking for is just a pick. They, they just want, they see all these people split pushing, they're like, we can catch people. We have uh, a Glimmer Caping Bane. We have a Winter Wyvern uh, flying over the trees. We should be able to get the jump on somebody and uh, get a kill so you can go into the base 5v4, but end of the day, they're going in now, they were waiting for the Refresher Orb, they've got it, and with this double Soul Ring, I think they have the double Winter's Curse. So that leaves Aegis and Cheese, as well as the Refresher, to be the key aspects of the next engagement, and the range racks to Dyer's fall pretty much instantly. Yep, and Glyph Radiant's is on cooldown since it was... Under attack. For it. They're just gonna lose their racks! I don't think you can afford this as Empire. You've got other lanes pushing in, so I'm not I'm not sure what the play is. I guess they think they have to get mid or nothing else. Um, and we've got TP's back from no fear, but still Silent hasn't gone. Silent finally goes, and they're going to maybe lose the mid lane of Rax as well. Let's see what they can muster as a defense. You've got Aloha Dawn zapping people, but nobody cares about Fade Bolt now. Their melee Rax in the mid lane. It is going down quickly. They've also got an Alpha Wolf, of course. They pull him back. Can they throw him to Rocket Barrage? There's a hook shot, and the BKB immediately. They throw out the dust for the Glimmer Capes, and there's the Lasso coming out on Silent. Now he's maybe going to take a Requiem of Souls to the face. He's suddenly got no damage. There's the Shallow Grave, but no fear on the backlands has died off as well. 
Silence going down. He does not have buyback, and that's just GG, I think. And now Cheshire Cat just fame fly flying around, and they're gonna go work on top racks, and that's it. That's our game. Oof. Absolutely. Uh, Empire played a great game too. I think Arcade were just making sure that there was no repeat performance there. They didn't throw the advantage. They drafted amazingly well, were able to pull out some key picks that just completely counteracted what Empire were trying to accomplish. And although there was a good farming game coming in from uh, Silent as well as Resolution, it just wasn't enough to really make up for the momentum that they lost because top lane was an auto win for sure. Um, the mid matchup seemed to favor the Shadow Fiend a lot after uh, the Bane really just stuck around and gave him that space. And then of course, down bottom, you have that Bat Rider which was able to trade nicely. The Dazzle's Poison Touch got him to go back to base exactly once, but otherwise, uh, Cheshire had a lot of experience. The Creep Equilibrium was constantly out of control, and Arcade were able to build uh, every bit of momentum. They started getting their key items, and they kind of just snowballed from there. They It did drag out, but with every single Roche under control and not snatched away, uh, Arcade are able to steal the deal here in Game 3 of the Best of 3 series. So, impressive showing. Uh, I really like to see Arcade in action, and uh, I'm really liking to see their diverse hero pool. Obviously, things like the Bat Ride of the Huskar, we don't get to see those every day, so that's a lot of fun. But, uh, of course, condolences to Empire. They, they def definitely gave their all to the series, but uh, their rough start in Game 1 has, has come to bite them, as uh, unfortunately they do lose this match 2-1. to one. So, Arcade moving forward here in the group stage is looking really strong, and uh, Empire, better luck next time. But thank you guys so much for tuning in. It was a great pleasure to be able to broadcast these games for you guys on behalf of Beyond the Summit. I myself am Blaze. I was joined by Llama Down Under. You can follow her on Twitter at Llama Down Under, and I believe she has Facebook under that name as well. And I'm over at Blaze Casting. If you enjoyed the commentary, you can follow, or of course, you can shoot some feedback our way to let us know how we can improve. Uh, that's going to be wrapping up the broadcast for us tonight. It's been a long marathon of three best of three series here in Star Letter I League Europe, but that is going to be our conclusion here for today. Any shout outs, Lama? No, I also just had a lot of fun. I think we had some great games, even though maybe this lull set wasn't as rapier filled, but we still got some more bounty hunt done. It was a lot of fun. Absolutely. So, really fun to see some EU and CIS Dota really just. At its full potential, a lot of activity, a lot of interesting play styles, and uh, really interesting to see how 6.85b is shaping up as far as the the new meta games, the new picks, and uh, the new heroes that are top dog, and perhaps top dog in the Frankfurt Major, which will be coming up soon. Uh, yeah, like I said, that's going to wrap up the broadcast for us tonight. Uh, been a long day, and longer for me. I'm going to be playing a couple of matches uh, in another tournament. So if you guys are interested in that, you look look up my Twitter, and uh, I'll post about where you can watch that live stream. But uh, that's going to be it for the EU Dota, and uh, I'm sure Arcade and Empire are happy to get a night of rest. So you guys, if you are in the Europe, uh, 